So talk, talk us through that race. Uh, 44-7, hell of a run in the opener heat. Yeah, I mean, last night, I'll be honest, like, um, it's been a long time since I can say that I had a target on my back. Or it's been a long time since I can say that I was number one at something. You know, I got my fuel for my races a lot of times from chasing and, you know, that motivation from having that chip on my shoulder, being the underdog, the one in the shadows. So it was different, you know, um, coming into this meet as a favorite, I saw some posts, and I know I probably should stay away from it, but I saw some posts that question, like, is God going to overwhelm the favorite? Stuff like that, it could, give, it could give some people confidence, but for me, I like to have that, have something in front of me to go get. And um, I was a little bit nervous. I was more nervous for the prelim than I was the final. After that prelim, though, I think what, I think actually losing helped me. I lost to somebody and I was like, I know that sounds weird to say, but a little familiar. I'm like, okay, I like that. I like having somebody to chase, having that same guy who beat me in the prelims in my final. It's just like, I'm a racer, you know what I mean? I, I want to go for it. But um, a weird turn took place this morning. I was sick. I was throwing up. Um, anything I tried to eat, I was throwing it right back up. And we're running seven, uh, the race shot at 720. All day I'm trying to get some nutrition and I'm, I can't like keep anything down it's a little bit scary but we talk about it at practice we talk about it in our team meetings about controlling the controllables and so i knew i had a job to do i knew my team was dependent on me so i just had to get right mentally i, I, I called a few of my resources and and i and i came out here with as much confidence as i could like you know muster up in my mind to come out here and do what i did and in lane six was familiar for me um, I ran that, that's the, um, the world leading time in lane six as well at Arkansas. So I was really familiar with the race strategy out of lane six. So when the gun shot, everything was instant. And um, I think after that, like once I came off the bed, I'm swinging my arms. When I lock up, I know it. I mean, it's like, there is no question in that. My knees can't get up, my arms can't. I know that feeling. So when I'm feeling good coming into the home stretch, I felt like it would be a good time. I glanced up at the time and I walked off, I had to go throw up, pass out, recover. And then, um, like I said, it's been a, a roller coaster ride because I couldn't recover in time to be out there with my guys in a four by four. So I was on a, I was on the sidelines and I was cheering them on, but I, I trusted in them and what they was able to do was amazing. So honestly, when I reflect on this meet alone, it's, it's the team atmosphere. I just love how we all came together through all that adversity and, and persevered still. Obviously, you were here for Georgia, but you have the talent that's at an international level. Right. You want to try to make it to Budapest oh, yeah, in, sure. in 2023. For sure. What are your thoughts on some notable runner like Michael Norman deciding to maybe potentially leave the 400 and go in 100? Hey, man, um, I'm not going to lie. It's fun to race those guys because they're really fast, and I love going at it with them. I actually raced Michael Norman for the first time in my Olympic in Olympic trials first round, all the way in lane nine. And I remember the commentators sounded like they had to look me up, like, oh, um, it's Elijah Godwin out there in lane nine. So it's, it's really fun to race with those guys, but you know, it's always upcoming talent. So, you know, success to them. And um, I'm gonna go at, with the, go at it with the guys that's still there, but yeah. Cool, well, best of luck outdoors and we'll see you on the track. Guys. I appreciate it.